welcome to my channel. I'm Makita and this is uh, Mrs. R's Books and Things or if you're coming from any other spaces online then you know me as Mrs. R Bookish. So today I want to share with you a book review of um, one of the newest books that I have read and it is a prequel and a novelette. So I want to share that with you today. Um, so right now we're on my website and I did a review of this actual book and so I do want you to go through and I want you to check it out but um, I wanted to come over here and show it to you really quickly that way you know you would know uh, you'd have more information on it so this is the um, the book called Escape in Alteza, and I hope I'm saying it right. It's uh, a, it's a part of the Crystal Life series. It's the prequel, and it's written by D'Artagnan Johnson. Okay, so again, let me just start off by saying that if you have not already gone over to my blog and learn more, um, if you have not already subscribed to my um, my TikTok or um, if you are not already subscribed here over on YouTube, then I want to encourage you to go ahead and um, get linked in with me, you know, get connected. So you'll know and you'll be able to stay updated on the book reviews um, that I am doing, uh, the books that I'm reading. You'll, we'll be able to have discussions about my TBR. You can even share with me what you've read. As you can see, I've read uh, The Love Songs of W.E.B. Du Bois, and I will be doing a review of that very soon. Okay, so now that I have your attention, we're going to be talking about that book, which was called um, Escape in Alteza. And um, I want to start off by saying that it is a fantasy novel, right? It's a novelette. And if you've ever listened to me talk about any of my reads before, you'll know that that is a new genre for me. And one of the reasons why is because I am literally wanting to step out and to venture into new areas and new topics of interest and um, really start to diverse my reads even more. And so I've decided to find me some fantasy books to read. Um, I tried it before. A few years ago, I tried to read some fantasy novels, and my conflict was always that it was just so hard to get into. As I would get started, it would just take forever with the world building, and then I'd have to learn the character names. And before, by the time the story started, I would be so confused about who's who and where are we and what's going on that I really lost interest. Um, I oftentimes felt like I had to take notes whenever I would read those things, read those fiction books, I mean those um, fantasy books. And it's not that I don't wanna go back to read them again. I might try them later on. I just wanted that when I sat down to read something that was gonna be fantasy that I actually had fun, that I enjoyed the experience um, and that it was something that I would want to, you know, pick up and spend my time reading. Cause a lot of those books, they end up being like, I don't know, 800 pages or so, depending on the size of the book that I'm reading, whether it's, you know, mass paperback or it's hardcover or whatever. Um, even when I'm reading the Kindle book, I still feel like my attention is being taken because there's a lot of different things going on. So for that reason, um, I've just kind of been testing the water and trying different um, authors, as you can see right here. Um, and when I say fantasy, I guess I'm looking at fantasy slash science fiction. And I probably really shouldn't be coupling those two things together right now. But for me, I am. And the reason is because this is the way that I'm able to venture into this genre with freedom and just trying to see, like, what do I like over here, right? And later on, I'll probably split it up to really be more um, more defined on, 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 on what, exactly what it is that I'm reading. But for right now, this is just the journey I'm on. So as you can see, I've actually got some Octavia Butler books, um, and she is a science fiction writer. And so... Um, as I mentioned, the book that I read was by uh, D'Artagnan Johnson, and, and D'Artagnan is an indie author. 
Um, and I'm so glad that I found him over on TikTok. I used to do a lot of like hauling on here and sharing what I had purchased and what I was getting rid of and things like that. And while I still will be sharing that information, I'll probably, I will probably re be reserving this particular space for my actual thoughts on the books, the long form thoughts on the books, the book reviews, the um, the different topics that I really want to talk about when it comes to um, reading and, and literature, you know, and the process of being a reader and all these other different things. So um, with that being said, TikTok is like my space where I just can quickly share whatever I want to share about the books and my journey and my experience and my love or hate for what I'm reading, depending on what it is. And then um, Instagram is where I just like to post my pictures. So I will tell you that one thing I'm trying to get to is a space where I go live. And um, it's just because I kind of want to have that live conversation with my audience on a regular basis. Now, what exactly is regular? I don't know. I don't know yet what regular is, but I do want to have a regular conversation with you guys eventually. I'm just not sure what platform that's going to be on. Okay, so now that I've gotten that out the way, we're going to talk about this actual novelette. So like I was saying, uh, when I first started it, I was really concerned. I was like, okay, what am I getting myself into? Am I going to enjoy this? It's going to be too detailed for me. But I just said, let me go ahead and try it anyway because it sounds like a really great story. And um, basically, I'm so glad that I did. As I sat down and I read it, I felt like I was literally watching a movie or a series. And I actually think it would be great for it to be a series because it is... Um, it, it has so many different elements like it has political elements in it um, it has uh, romance elements in it it has great character development and then it has a special family dynamic within it um, it has this generational touch that's these things that are happening within the generations in it um, and it's not very long at all but the way that D'Artagnan put all this stuff together it really just makes you go wow I really want to get into the next book if I have not read book one, which I haven't, so I'm starting book one. But um, if you have, then you know, um, you know, now you know the, the beginning. Now you can go back and you can see how everything really started. So let me just tell you a little bit about what the book is about. And this, these are no spoilers or anything, but um, basically the, um, there's a, let me see what he says. <laughs> Let me see what he says the book is about before I spoil it. One second. Okay, so you can read over this with me, really. It says, every year the Bizitiki uh, royal family holds a festival honoring the ancestors. But while the family tree, uh, golden and glorious, towers over the city, mixed bloods like... Lidinium, uh, sullied by a people who once roamed the land, aren't allowed to attend. Tenema, the oldest living ancestor of her tainted bloodline, has been in prison for nearly a millennium. Um, and the busy tiki queen, like her predecessor, is using his existence as fuel to continue to ostracize the mixed bloods. But, but Lenalem has a plan that's really bizarre. And if the queen finds out, then she wouldn't hesitate to really, you know, take care of her. So, um, if I can say a few different things, it is that we're dealing with a, uh, a mixing of what, maybe species here. And there are some, um, there's a lot of friction around the fact that there is this mixing of species. And... I don't even know if D'Artagnan, if he would call it species, but I'm, I'm saying that because of the, the text that I got in the book and what I pictured in my mind. And so um, as we're going through this experience, I mean, the, the, the imagery, like he said, there's a tree, right? And the imagery of this tree is so vivid. It's so beautiful. I could literally see this tree in my mind. And the things that are happening within this story um, it's not very long. It's 65 pages. It's a novelette. So I'm trying to not spoil it for you. But the things that happen within this story, they lead uh, the characters to go on this journey. 
okay because there's a specific plan that is in place um and the, the main character let alone she's so full of emotion and she wants to just do something about um the tragedies that have been happening to her family and her kind um what i loved about the story is that even though it's centered around this political aspect of like there being this um integrating issue there is still and that's a political part it's part of the political part about it there are these real magical elements within the story that are so unbelievable that they can al almost feel believable and i know that that sounds crazy but i think that's the thing that makes magical stories or even thrillers or any type of fiction good is when it's so unbelievable but it's written in a way that's so believable that you feel like you're there or you feel like you're actually going through this experience and um so i love that part about it i also love the family dynamic i love how um i love how d'artagnan wrote in the different elements of family and how there there are these family conflicts that take place within the story that i'm sure lead directly into you know his series completely um especially with me finishing it and knowing where we end off in the novelette i'm sure that you know this is a part of the story but this this family dynamic number one the family is beautiful that's the first thing and the other thing is that there's a conflict there that um is directly related with every other part of the development of the story whether it be political um whether it be the romance that's developed in the story um the friendships the journey that it's just all fit together very well um one of the things that i will say is that i enjoy the writing i really loved how d'artagnan wrote this book i love the fact that um while it was not um overly descriptive to the point that I felt like I was lost. I liked the fact that he had enough descriptions in there so that I didn't feel like the text was being dumbed down for me. I still, as you could see when I was reading, I still had to figure out how to pronounce the names and the places. I still had to within my mind build this world that he put together. I had to visualize these things. But what I loved about it was that he didn't make it difficult for me to for me to see it it was it was there it was plain it was well crafted i love that i also love the pace of the story i love how yes it is 65 pages but i've read things before that are very drawn out right within 65 pages i actually wish that there was more attached onto this book to just keep me you know keep me enthralled in it um and i was kind of disappointed when it ended because i was like no there has to be more but um, I love the pacing. I love the fact that the minute that I thought it was slowing down, it picked right back up. The minute that I thought that, you know, we were going to have to go so deep into the character that, you know, I might get bored again. It didn't. It He just, he laid out everything just enough to keep me going, um, to keep me through this book. And for someone who may be into fantasy and science fiction you may be like makita why did you need to be you know encouraged to keep going in a 65 page book and i'm going to tell you it's because normally if i'm trying to read a, a science fiction or a fantasy book it takes like 200 or so pages before it even feels like it's starting to pick up and by that time i don't want to read it anymore by that time i want to read something else and it's probably because my palate is not ready for this genre, right? And uh, and what I mean by that is I read a lot of literary fiction. I read a lot of nonfiction. I read a lot of um, um, historical fiction. Um, you know, I, I read a lot of different types of things, but there are certain genres I just have not really gotten into because... I haven't really wet my palate with it. I haven't really tasted it and, and felt like this is my thing and this is where I want to stay. This is where I want to go with it. So that's why I didn't want to get, you know, sidetracked with the 65 pages. Also, being known that I'm a, I'm a mood reader. Yes, I have a TBR. I have a list. I have things that I want to read. But I also read based upon how I feel 
as well. I like to enjoy what I'm reading. I like to feel like I'm on a great journey. I like to feel like, um, I like to have challenges in my reading, but not to the point that they discourage me from it. So I really loved the pacing. I also love the characters. I love that each character had its own type of boldness, even when they were more reserved. There was still a boldness, a very, every character has its own strong personality. But it doesn't mean that every, every character is boisterous or um, extrovert. They just each had their place. They each had their voice. They each had their presence. And they owned that place. And I really like that. I like that about the story. And as it kept going, there were uh, pivotal points where each character had a little bit more of a developmental um, part. Um, what else? insightfulness because I'm kind of going off of the things that I put on my blog which if you go over to my website you can see it but insightfulness um so I think what I picked up in regards to insightfulness is that this story that he is building right this world that he is creating these characters that he is developing they have this background and this background story is one that could actually resonate with all of us when you get into it, when you start looking at the generational things that are happening, when you start understanding what's really going on, you realize that this is something that we all kind of want more information about. And having that type of insight and putting that into a book like this, it really gives the book more flavor. I don't know if I'm hungry, y'all. I know I keep using things that have to do with like taste and palate and flavor. But um, when I think about the experience, I I don't know right now how else to say it because it's not just like, it's not that it was just good. It's not that I enjoyed it. It's that I really want you to understand that if you have an opportunity to pick up this book, it's 65 pages go ahead and do it. It's not out yet. It won't be out until November. I was able to get the ARC. Um, but if you are someone who um, are interested in it, then mark your calendars and go ahead and go pre-order it. Um, what I gave it was a five. I gave it a five out of five. I don't do that very often. I have done it a few different times this year and I especially did it for this particular book because of how much I loved it and because of how much it made me want to go and read another one of D'Artagnan Johnson's books. Um, I also gave it a five because I literally felt like I was watching a movie. I felt like when I sit down to watch one of my series on Netflix, um, or when I sit down and watch a movie with my husband, or when we go and we watch, you know, the Marvel series, movies, and things like that, I felt like that. And it was so much so that I started telling my husband about it, and he was like, is it really that good? And I said, yes, it really is. And I hated that it was so short. So, I mean, it is what it is because it's just supposed to be a prequel. It's just supposed to be a, a tester, right? A, um, a taster, I guess you could say. Um, but I really loved it. And um, I encourage you, if you're wanting to know if I recommend it, my answer is yes, I do. I do recommend it. Um, I hope that, you know, you find that my opinion is in alignment with yours. However, I know that not everybody will agree with me, um, especially, and this is just my assumption. I think that maybe if you are one who normally reads non, um, not nonfiction, but science fiction and fantasy, you may differ with me a little bit because you have more uh, experience in this space. Again, um, I'm not trying to turn down my review at all, but I am just saying that I know like there are some who have read literary fiction and uh, historical fiction and have said that some books are like amazing. And then because those are, that's the genre I'm always in when I read it, I'm just kind of like, did we read the same book? But um, while that might be pe possible, I still want to encourage you to give this a chance, okay? So um, if you like this review, if you have any comments or questions for me, make sure that you leave a comment down below. Don't forget to go over to my website, which is mrsreadingcorner.com. That's where you can see all of my 
my blog posts and my current um, book reviews. I had to start a new website. Um, I had to get a new name from a long time ago. So I kind of revamped everything and started it over. Um, if you want to connect with me on a more regular basis, you can go over to um, TikTok because I'm almost always over there on TikTok um, and I'm Mrs. R Bookish over there. And if you're interested in Instagram, you can find me on Instagram as well. So you can just connect with me on those different platforms. I'm also on Twitter, so you can connect with me there as well. And then um, I'd love to connect with you. If you read this book or if you've read any of D'Artagnan Johnson's books, and you find that they are interesting or whatever your feedback is, please let me know. If you have a recommendation for a science fiction or fantasy book that you think that I might enjoy, one that you loved, um, I I'm interested in trying it. So please go ahead and even leave that in the comments below for more information from me. And then I want to just say thank you so much for watching. Until next time. Bye.